Pledged by Council Member Swear. Council Member Bruce Hart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's bow our heads and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Everyone face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Madam Clerk, please initiate the roll call. Francis Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Marcus Broussard. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gotchison. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Dustin Swear. Here. James Traha. Here. Scott Ronson. Here. Brock Pellerin. Here. Brian Napier. Lady Fontenay Brown. Cayman Capel. Here. And Chad Mosherman. Here. We have uh, 12 members in the quorum. Moving on to council member announcements. Uh, the gentlewoman from District 6 is recognized. Uh, I have a couple things. First, I want to give a shout out to um, our sewage district. I got a call yesterday at 3.39 that there was a problem at a pump station in uh, my district and called Brad Crador and by 4.47 I had a phone call from Brad that they had found it, repaired it, and uh, all was well. So well, I uh, just a, a shout out to them for that quick response and uh, service to our constituents. Uh, and secondly, I would like to um, recognize uh, Cayman uh, and congratulate him on behalf of myself and the Iberia Parish uh, Republican Executive Committee. Uh, Cayman <coughs> was recently recognized by the Louisiana Young Republicans Federation for his outstanding, generous, and effective service uh, to the people of Iberia Parish <coughs> and the Republican Party. So we wanted to congratulate you on that recognition. Keep up the good work. Good, nice. I yield, Mr. Chairman. The gentlewoman from District 6 yields back. The gentleman from District 10 is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got a couple of things. Uh, just want to let everybody know Friday, September 13th and 14th, uh, the Lydia Cancer Society will be having their uh, food fest in uh, Weeks Park in Lydia. Uh, great time, great food. Uh, me and Cayman will have a booth representing the council uh, cooking on Saturday. Uh, Y'all come out and enjoy some good food and good time. They got multiple bands. Uh, secondly, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this or bring this up, but I will. Uh, we had a, uh, a murder in my district today, this morning, whatever, uh, and we've had I think three in the past three days in the parish, if not more than that, we may have two more that I, I'm not too sure about. Uh, this is my plea to uh, the council, the mayor, the sheriff, the district attorney, our local pastors, our priests, our, our nonprofits. Man, we need to come together and, and come up, I'm not gonna say what a solution because I don't think they have a solution, but a proactive plan for this, this parish, this community, this city, uh, you know, we always get the negative in, 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 the, in the spotlight, but we do have a lot, a lot of positives, but we need to do something about this, come up with some kind of proactive plan together and work together and, and try to get this, this, this violence down in our city and in our parish. This is my plea to everyone who's listening. Let's come together and try to come up with a proactive plan to help out with these situations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from District 10 yields back. The gentleman from District 2 is recognized. Yeah, I want to uh, give a big shout out to our Public Works Department. We've been having a lot of problems over there with drainage in, in my area. And over the last <clears throat> three weeks to a month, they've been over in my area. We still have some problems that we're going to try to correct. But they did a fantastic job, so I want to thank them. So, the gentleman from t uh, District 2 yields back. Members, is there anyone else that didn't have an opportunity hearing and seeing none? Oh, we have Council Member Pollard is recognized. Yes, uh, just to let uh, the parish know, uh, Marcus Broussard, I thought he was going to say something about it, but 182 
passed down there a couple of days ago, first time in a while that I passed down 182, and it looked like they did some move those cones out of the uh, road and everything. So uh, they listen. You've been preaching for that for a while. <laughs> Good job, Bruce. Good job, Bruce. We got to keep sending those uh, requests. Them in. Keep them. I'll keep That's yeah. it, sir. Mr. Pollitt, I appreciate that update, sir. Thank you, Mr. The gentleman, gentleman from District 1 yields back. Uh, members, I do want to recognize that there will be a ribbon cutting ceremony on September 11th in Bolany Plaza. Uh, I do want to recognize a council member from District 3 inside the city limits. Uh, Councilman Bruce Hart is here tonight. Without objection, members, I'd like to give him the podium just for a few minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that everybody knows Councilman oh, yeah. Bruce Ord. Oh, yeah. Dustin, uh, you, you, you recognize this gentleman, huh? Oh, yeah. I want to thank all of y'all. Most of that are Mr. Bruce, before you begin, just state <laughs> yeah. your name. David and, Bruce Ord, City Councilman, District 3. Larry, I want to thank you each and every time you let me have the mic. Chairperson, uh, God should say, this full council. I want to thank my mayor. My full council over there in Yarbury for helping me put up these two important plaques that you have in front of you. Very important. They're my grandpa and his brother. I'm not gonna stand on my grandpa's head. I'm gonna talk about my grandpa's brother. Had the idea and helped push. Very important, Yarbury Parish. And for a lot of parishes along here, push the Intracoastal Canal, which they misspelled, not us, the black people. <laughs> it's okay. misspelled Intracoastal. But we had to leave it alone at $25,000 worth of plaques here. <laughs> so in a big way, uh, Robert pushed to get the Intracoastal from Texas <clears throat> to Florida. You tell me how many ports have been built along there and helped. So that's big things these U.S. Senators, back to back, U.S. Senators did. We finally showing notice, putting these plaques up at Bolinay Plaza. So in a big way, uh, Edwin, my grandpa, yeah. He, he, he had some women corner him way back in 1900. We need some help to build a city park. He had Washington, D.C. people come down and help fund it and help design it. So there's a lot of things. I don't want to stand up here and tell you the length of stuff they did for Iberia Parish, but I'm very, very proud of them. And y'all look on the computer if y'all have a chance. Look how much they did way back. The federal building, the strings are sitting in. That was the first federal building built on this side of the Mississippi River. Robert got built. We needed 30,000 people in a town to build this thing. 3,000 people we had in this town at the time. So there's a lot of push these brothers did, and I want y'all to come help us celebrate it on 9-11, 10.45 a.m. at Bolini Plaza next to the Liberty Bell. So I thank y'all. Yeah, I'm emotional about this, but uh, we appreciate y'all help. Thank and you. Come, uh, and hope we can all push <coughs> for things, you know. Don't just sit up here and hold your hands and whatever to, to try to do something in your districts. So I thank you all and thank you, Larry. Thank, thank you, the Chairman. <clears throat> and thank this whole council for listening to me every so often. Mr. Bruce, are you always welcome to come here? Thank you for working with us, and we appreciate all you do for our community. <laughs> Moving on to uh, parish president announcements. Parish President Richard. If, if I can, David, I want to. I, I seriously want to thank you for everything you do as a council member, the things that you've been working on for the last many years and what we're working on right now, you and I. I'm really glad, Natalie, that you got a chance to say what you said about the sewer district. That makes me feel very, very good. Um, uh, same thing with you, Mr. Landry, in reference to public works, this is a big deal. And me, uh, Cayman, as an independent from the independent caucus that we have in Iberia Parish, which I doubt if we have one, I think it might be the only one. I want to tell you congratulations on what you're doing as well as a young involved person. Okay. Uh, getting started with parish president's announcement, <clears throat> a little abatement took place on Saturday, August the 24th. A total of 12 people participated from 8 o'clock to 12 noon. A total of 59 bags was collected <clears throat> in the Jenneret area uh, on Rightway Road, Pelloran Road, and also at Doyle. Of course, when we talk about 59 bags, you know, you got your mattresses and your tires and everything else that's involved in that. 
but we, we're picking up a lot of trash in Iberia Parish, and we have a lot of trash left in Iberia Parish to be picked up. From August the 14th to August the 27th, the Public Works Department completed several tasks, which includes debris pickup, filling roadside drainage, side boom road work, grading, patching and repairs, and other work uh, that you can actually see on this list that was actually done uh, throughout this parish. If you take a look at road patching, you can see we did some road patching in District 5, 9, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, uh, tree trimming the whole nine yards. The Public Works Department have a lot that they do, and we can't give enough credit to them for the work that they are doing. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a project update. <clears throat> this morning we attended our final official uh, progress meeting for the Jefferson Canal South. A uh, demonstration was provided for the Public Works Department, my administrative staff, covering uh, gate adjustments and procedures as outlined by the manufacturer. Uh, last Friday, engineers conduct leak and seal tests on the gates uh, that flooded up the upside, um, upstream side of the structure to verify that, th that they work properly. Everything was in order and we're pending the official uh, notice for, to the contractor as far as as far as substantial completion. So we should be done with this particular project um, by September the 18th. It is 99% completed right now, and we just have a few things that we need to get done. You're getting ready to look at a test that was performed. This was done on Friday. As you can see, they're opening up now to let the water actually go toward the gate, and farther on in this little video that you're gonna look at is gonna fill the other side of the structure. So you see in the structure from the beginning to where we are right, where we are right now. So on the opposite side of that uh, excavator, in a little bit, you're gonna see where the water is starting to fill up and they're gonna have dirt that's actually was there on Friday to collect that. So you can actually see that it's working correctly. As of now, that dirt on the other side is removed. And on this side of the structure is about two feet lower than the opposite side. So it's totally working, it's doing very good. You see the water accumulating right here already. And so we removed all of that as of now, so it's working, it's working extremely good. That's a big thing for us. It's gonna help a lot in that area uh, when you have the waters coming from the Gulf of Mexico, and we have like 14 of these to do. This is the second one that we have completed. We're working with CPRA right now to make sure that we're doing everything according to their master plan. <clears throat> we have several other structures that's taking place, I can tell you. Uh, I see Craig is in the audience. Hopefully he might mention something later, but what we're doing with CPRA in reference to um, levies that we're gonna try to actually get done that's gonna be funded by CPRA. We have two big structures that we're looking at doing in Iberia Parish right now. One at the commercial, it's gonna be somewhere around 165 million. One at the Delcom um, area is gonna be somewhere around $80 million. So we have a lot that's going on in Iberia Parish right now. Moving on, additional information. Iberia Parish government is currently hiring several positions, including Director of Homeland Security, Director of Finance, Acadiana Fairground Maintenance Worker, <clears throat> a Public Worker Number One in Public Works, Wastewater Treatment and Collection Operator, and a Public uh, Safety Telecommunications 911 uh, people. So these roles are off, uh, and opportunities to join Iberia Parish team. We want to try to get as many people, good qualified people to come into Iberia Parish. For, information, for more information about these positions, just uh, simply go to Iberia Parish website and you'll find all of this. Um, we got some serious things going on in Iberia Parish. And before I end, I wanna say the same thing I say all the time. If anyone get an opportunity, please go to Iberia Parish government website. It's www.iberiaparishgovernment.com. Look at the site, if you see anything that you, that you notice that you want to be changed or you want to add something to the site, make sure you let us know. It's a, it's a constant upgrade type of thing that we're doing right here. We have a lot of good things going on, so we're trying to make sure that the people uh, that look at this site understand that Iberia Parish will open for business and we've got a lot happening. So thank you, any questions from anyone? I do have a question. You, you kind of mentioned about commercial and mm -hmm. um, I can't think of all the canal, you Delcom Canal, Delcom, but yeah. also you, you're fixing, or at least the parish government's fixing to begin the project on Rodera Canal, correct? Absolutely, that, yes. That, do you know about a time frame? Which one? Hit to put you on we, the spot. We, we, got, we got the paperwork signed. I would assume, Warren, it would be, 
I don't want to say anything until I look at it. Let me answer that for you the next time. No, that's fine. And I think it's critical because a lot of these projects will be refunded Absolutely. back from CPRA at some point, and we'll be able to go to different structures. Yeah, the way we're doing it, just so you know, we have been using Gold Mesa dollars, as you know, to do the engineering Correct. and some of the initial construction work, and CPRA is actually funding what we do. We have a very good working relationship with CPRA. We need to keep that going. Uh, but they're funding our projects. None of these projects that we are com that we've completed so far, whether it be the um, Jefferson Canal South or the Jefferson Canal um, North, we are doing the engineering, the analysis, and CPRA is funding for the most part everything. And we're in the guidelines of the, oh, the right. um, of the master plan. The master plan. Yes. Okay. Good. Were there any questions for the parish president? We do have one by the council member from District Seven. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the question I have is actually has nothing to do with which I presented here. Um, prior to this meeting, we did discuss, it was brought up that about the, the possibility of the city taking over the Sugar King Festival building. Okay. So I was under the assumption that we were gonna have it on this agenda. Uh, so I just can wanted you, to know if there's any updates. Can you tell me, I can, hold on. Yes, okay. Are there any updates or can anything Can you on tell that? me what made you, what gave you that assumption? Who did you speak to? Well, I mean, I, I, spoke, I spoke to others. I so, mean, who was other? So I can know how you got that well, assumption. You didn't speak to me. Number one, the the mayor. I've spoken to other council members. Okay. So I'm asking. So did the council members tell you? Because I don't set the agenda. Did the council members say it was going to be on this agenda? There was a submittal. I'm, I was under the impression that there was a submittal oh, to know. be on the agenda. So, Not so that I'm members, I, can, I guess that question should come here. We did receive a proposal from the mayor's office, okay. from the mayor himself. Okay. That proposal was then directed to council leadership, right. the parish president's office, right. and legal. And it's under, right. I guess, if you will, under research at this point from legal and the parish president. Right. At some point, there'll be, I guess, some recommendation to come back. It'll go to right. the mayor. And then at that point, we'll have some deba debate on this floor. But I can tell I can you, bring Mr. To you. Chairman, if you want, if I can answer, I can no, tell absolutely. you how, I can tell well, you I just, how I'm planning on answering what I did receive from the chairman. We received, um, I guess it's a, maybe a, a printout of uh, a Google map, something, whatever. Uh, we in Iberia Parish is looking to um, give the um, Sugarcane Festival building to the city. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's a few other things that's gonna go along with it. Mm -hmm. Devil's Pond, uh, a few other things that's going to go mm -hmm. along with it. And what I received back from the city, of course, they uh, told us that we can keep the, uh, the Veterans Memorial Building, which is already ours, so I'm glad we can keep it. <laughs> but the one thing that I didn't uh, <laughs> particularly, uh, <laughs> one thing I, I didn't particularly quite understand is that they was going to give us a right of way to get to the building, and I'm not going to accept that at all. Since you bring it out in public, I wasn't going to bring this out in public. But since you asked for it, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to accept someone giving the parish a right of way to get to their building when we're giving them property. Right. Okay. We're going to have to have that property is going to have to be donated to the parish. So when also. suppose someone become a mayor three years from now, 20 years from now, and they say, you know what? We're not going to give you a right of way to your building. Yeah. What do we do? So those types of things are going to have to go through legal to go back the way it was communicated to me, then it's going to go back to Warren, then it's going to go back to the mayor, and at some point in time, you would have think the, we're going to communicate, the mayor and I are going to communicate. Yeah, right. But okay. I just wanted right to ask now. a question, because it is in my district, okay. so I haven't been hearing much of what's been going on. It was mentioned in the previous meeting that yeah. we were in talks, or the administration yes. was in talks. Yes. So I just yeah. kind of, I know budget's coming up for the city, Okay. and Okay. So I'm not sure. This has been something, so you know, that Freddie, that the mayor and I have been talking about for two years. Two years. Yeah. So this is not something to be directly honest with you that I'm getting ready to flip overnight. I okay. received it last Thursday. I have some things I have to do to look at it and make sure it's going to be in the best interest of Iberia Parish. Mm -hmm. When I finish looking at it, I'm going to give it to the legal. Legal's going to look at it. We're going to communicate <coughs> with what's going on. We're going to send it back. But this is something that we have been talking about for two years. And we're certainly not going to run through this thing in two days. To okay. make it. I, it's got to be something that's going to benefit this parish long term. Yeah, I'm with you. I just wanted to get some answers. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. And, and Thank we you. did receive it after the deadline. So Tuesday's yeah. the deadline for a council agenda, <coughs> according to our publication. Week, yeah. So we did receive it after that point. Right. So there's no okay. way we could have got it here at this point. 
with enough time for them to adequately review it and get it back to us. And, and I did talk to the mayor about that. He, he was under the understanding that he, it wouldn't be at this deal. But we do, again, I have not talked to legal about it, but I know I there is some negotiations being talked, which could be possibly, you know, in the past when we've done negotiation process, we had to get some kind of value for something we were giving up. So what Larry mentioned about the rite of passage, that could be something in negotiations that can satisfy both sides of the parties right. that, okay. that you were asking about. And, and, to, right. and to be honest with you, I would have rather talked to, directly to the mayor about this. Well, you but will. since you're bringing it up, i got to answer your questions. But I would have rather. And I, and I appreciate yeah. you answering the question. Yeah. But I would have rather talked to Freddie directly before this would be televised. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mr. Yeah, that's it. All right, the gentleman you. from District 7 yields back. The gentleman from District 3 is recognized. Uh, yeah, Mr. Larry. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you give us an update on the, um, I think we put maybe 20000 in the budget late last year, Paul did before he left, on the uh, dumpsters moving two or three different spots around the yes. parish. Can, do you have an update yes, on that, I I, did. kind of where we are? Right. We have already moved uh, one to, um, to Sugar Arena. We have one at Public Works. And the old barn. So we, all, we have three of them out already. Are we, are we, the task we, is completed that we can start? Ab absolutely. People can will, start and people are already using them. Okay. Using them. Okay. I, yeah. Is uh, that something we can share? Because that's something that's been And there's multiple in dumpsters Facebook. there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just recycling. So if it, just for the record, it's recycling and bulky waste can be brought there. Absolutely. We, basically, is a drop-off point to where you can drop off your recyclables mm -hmm. as, well as, as well as your bulky waste. Can we share that on the Facebook or the web page? So it may the, already be on there. I'm not, I may have missed yeah. it. We miss things. We all okay. miss things. Yeah. But, yeah, thank we, you. We'll make sure it's on there. Thank you. Good question. Good. Thank you so much for that. The gentleman from And Mr. also, 3. if I can, there was an email that came today. I'll answer that question for you, too, uh, from a gentleman named Ron uh, Pellerin, Pelche. And he was trying. He asked you a question about um, the um, wastewater discharge where it would be going, and that wastewater discharge, which I called Ronald Red, I know him personally, uh, that wastewater discharge is going to the sewer district plant on facility on uh, Lewis, on um, Center Street. You're welcome. The gentleman from District 3 yields back. The gentleman from District 10 is recognized for a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to piggyback on Marcus's question, do we have any kind of security uh, measures? We're putting cameras, okay. uh, and I really didn't want to say that either because I'm trying to catch people <laughs> doing things wrong. Man. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be directly honest. I really wish you will pick up that phone oh, a little okay. bit more. And call me, man, because some of the things we're doing, we're trying to plant some seeds if you get where I'm. We want to know when people are doing certain things. But, yes, to answer that now, yes. We have cameras that we're putting out at all of them, at all of the locations, or already out at the locations. Okay. We're trying to uh, <laughs> make sure we can catch people when they when they go they to a recyclable them. bin and they put a soap <laughs> in. <laughs> we want to see who's doing that. Mr. Pellery, the gentleman from District 10 yields back. Anyone else? Members here and seeing none. Moving on to... Public comments. I need a motion to go back and go into public comments. I have a motion by Councilwoman Broussard, second by Councilman Trejo. Vote your machines to go into public comments, members. Oh, Councilman Brown. Okay, hold on. Okay. That motion carries. We're now into public comments. Number one, Madam Clerk. Comments from the general <coughs> public on agenda items. We did not receive any. Number two, Madam Clerk. Persons being considered for appointment to parish boards commissions to address the council. Anyone here for boards and commissions? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to go back into regular session. Have that motion by Councilwoman Bruce Hart, second by Councilman Landry. Vote your machines, members. That motion carries. We're now back into regular session. Moving on to community events and public service announcements. We have item one, Madam, uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Richard Phillips to address the council to announce his candidacy for elect election for the office of Iberia City. New Iberia City Council Member District 5. Mr. Phillips, before you begin, I believe you gave me this three-minute time capsule. Yeah. Do I need to use it? Yeah. Uh, did I glue it? <laughs> it's, it's Welcome, Mr. Phillips. If you can just state your name and address for the record, sir. Richard Phillips, 420 East Main Street. Welcome back. Um, I am in the District 5 of the City Council. That is the position that I'm seeking to fulfill as a vacancy. Um, all of you, including myself, are problem solvers. That is what a uh, councilman or a salesperson or a person who is in public service, they are to solve other people's problems. And if you look at what I handed out, mm -hmm. 
My background is extensive in sales and marketing, which means I have people skills to convince people to do something. Uh, I moved to the public sphere and I was in inspection and code in Jefferson Parish during the Katrina era. And if you want to know who, who was putting Jefferson Parish back on its feet again, <coughs> it was ICE, Inspection and Code Enforcement. Every permit, uh, the business, the houses, um, virtually all of that business had to come through Inspection and Code. And uh, we were, we, I consider myself a second responder. We weren't out there pulling people off of roofs. We were putting the roofs back on their buildings. Um, I'm cutting to the chase. As a person whose whole life, both in the public and the private sector, has dealt with solving people's problems, I think I have a very unique package to offer the constituents in District 5. And by helping them, by extension, I'd be helping the city and the parish. Um, that's basically all I have to say. You've got a list of my work places. Um, I worked in quite a few places as I progressed in my career. But the last place I worked was at Jefferson Parish and literally helping put back a, uh, a, a whole parish. They had the flood too. So I'm done. <laughs> we have another appointment, so I'm not walking out on your meeting. I need to go to another appointment. Uh, uh, members, are there any questions for Mr. Phillip, Mr. Brown? No. Okay. no. okay. Hearing and seeing them. Mr. Phillips, I just want to thank you for putting yourself out there. Public service is uh, it's a tough profession, but uh, I applaud you for standing up and wanting to serve the community. Right. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, number two, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Mr. Raymond Shudu Lewis to address the council to announce his candidacy for election for the office of Abbey Parish Tax Assessor. Mr. Lewis? Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lewis isn't here. Uh, moving on to reports from finance and administrative actions. There is none. Reports from parish and other governmental agencies, number one. Mr. Craig Romero, ex Mr. Craig Romero, executive director and representatives of the Port of Iberia to address the council to provide an update on the Port of Iberia. Mr. Pettit, if you can just state your name and title, please. Patrick Broussard, I am a representative of the Port of Iberia. I'm actually a board president this year. Uh, that's why I'm up here first. Uh, with the flip one? Thank you. Uh, you can see the three members that are your representatives at the Port of Iberia is Danny Davi <coughs> and Mr. Rod Pontiff. I am in my first year uh, term. We have uh, three six-year terms. I'm in my first term. Roy's in his second term, and Danny's finishing his third term. We're, uh, we were put into this term in, 20, in 2020. 2026, our, our first, this term will be over, to give you an idea where we are in the process. Flip, please. One of the things I wanted, as your representative, I wanted to make clear was uh, when I took this job and, and talking to the other representatives, you remember back in 2020, we were having financial problems, we were having employment problems. To me, those were the two key things that we needed to work on at the Port of Iberia. Let's get people hired and let's uh, build a tax base. And we've been working at that since. First thing on top is uh, the pie chart. The Port of Iberia is self-funded. We have never taken any public funds to run the Port of Iberia. That gives you an idea of uh, where we are and uh, where our funds come from. Uh, with the lucrative interest rates we have right now, the investments have been the, uh, a big surprise. That was not there before. Before that, we had the, the real estate leasing only. But now we're, we're catching, catching a break, and we get, it gives us more money. Second part of it, that, that slide is the bar chart. It's uh, basically our, our uh, capital assets at the Port of Iberia. In uh, 2023, 2013, I mean, we had $76 million. We're at $195 million in assets right now. So we're doing it without asking the public to to help us. 
We're doing it with uh, state money. We're doing it with, uh, go ahead and flip, please. We're doing it with uh, <coughs> state money. We're doing it with uh, our rental, our rentals. This, par this, par uh, this is some of the information that we have to pull together for a Corps of Engineers. And basically, it's, it's, it's giving you an idea of the effect of the parish of, of New Iberia on the Cadiana region and the state of Louisiana. Jobs, we're at 3162. Government revenue at 4390 for, for the parish and then more for Acadiana. And this is all pro produced by a consultant that we had and just gives you an idea of what, what our effect. Roy. And for me, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pat. Roy's next. Second string. Mr. Roy, if you could just state your name and title, please. My name is Roy Pontiff. Uh, I am in my second term. Uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to represent, be one of the three representatives on the on the on the commission. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk about a project that I know a little bit about. I've been living with the the vision of deepening our channel for going on 24 years now. You know, one thing about the port is that if you look, the port commissioners, the port authority itself does not really generate any economic activity, nor does the four employees that we have generate any economic activity to the parish or the region or the state. Our mission is to, as, as, uh, as Pat said, is to bring companies to the port. Once we get them there, make them comfortable, provide the infrastructure that they can grow their business and do business with other businesses. And, and that multiply effect of wages and salaries and buying copy paper and purchases and uh, is in multiply effect and to generate the kind of numbers that you just saw in that draft. We learned early on that our, our vision of bringing companies to the port was getting more difficult because of the depth of our channel. Our channel was raised right after World War II. In 1947, about the same time the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway was dredged, I think that was completed in 1949. And both of these are at a, at a depth of 13, 13 feet. 13 feet is not enough to support the companies that we're trying to bring to the port now because of the size of the packages. They're getting much larger and therefore much heavier. And the vessels are getting much larger and they draft more water to get into the port. So that's why we started this, this process over 24 years ago to deepen our channel. It took, uh, you've all heard of the, of the saying that it, take, it took an act of Congress to get something done. When something's very complex and difficult to do, it does take an act of Congress. We had five active Congresses authorizing this channel from the Port of Iberia to the Gulf. The first one was in 2007, which authorized, initially authorized the channel. The last one was in 2014, and there was a couple of acts of Congress that were signed by the President of the United States uh, in between. So with, with those five acts of Congress and about 10 years ago, with authorization to dredge a 13-foot channel to deepen it to 16 for the whole 57 miles from the Port of Iberia to the Gulf, it brought us to the point that we are today. About 10 years ago, we realized that if we counted on the federal government to provide the funds to dredge that channel, it would be another 24 years before we got it done. That's about the time it's about the time that Craig Romero was, elect, was appointed the executive director. We took advantage of Craig's relationships that he made in Baton Rouge when he was parish president as well as when he was senator. And only he could probably do this. Got $124 million in the last couple of years to dredge the channel. And that's enough money to, to uh, complete the project. You know, in addition to his relationship, he used his timid, persuasive personality <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, 
to right, persuade yeah. the legislature and the governor and, and those in power th that th the channel was important to the state of Louisiana as well as, it, as well as the country. And we got that money to do that. So we have, we have enough money to complete the project just briefly. Uh, it's divided into three phases. The commercial canal is currently uh, probably going to be substantially complete this week. Uh, so that's going to be the, the reach between the Port of Iberia to Gulf Intercoastal Waterway. Gulf Intercoastal Waterway is the second reach, and it's already at 16 feet because, uh, because of the tug traffic. There's probably hun there's hundreds of tugs that navigate that channel uh, on a, on a, probably on a monthly basis, and the real wash has created the depth of already 16 feet. Second phase is freshwater bayou from Gulf Intercoastal Waterway to Freshwater by a locks. That is under contract and is estimated to be complete in April of next year. The third phase is modification. There's a lock on the inner freshwater budget for the Gulf of Mexico. The third phase is a modification to those locks to accommodate wider barges. The locks are restricted to 84 feet, and we have 100 foot wide barges that leave the port. So that's scheduled to be complete in May of next year. And then the final bar channel between the locks and the Gulf of Mexico has already been dredged by the Corps, uh, and that, was, com and that is, was completed in 23. So I can stand before you today with, with confidence that by this time next year, the Port of Iberia XX channel will have a 150-foot bottom width and a minus 16-foot deep channel from Port Road to the Gulf of Mexico. The second. <laughs> big, big thank thing. you for that. It's not, it's not just me. It's the, it's the commission and of course Craig, uh, with with his ability to get the money to do it. Again, if we'd have waited on the federal government, that'd be we'd be back here. Well, I probably wouldn't be back here at all. <laughs> the second major project we got going on, if I can just take a second, is another uh, another phase. Uh, an expansion phase. This is the third expansion we've had in the recent years. Um, it's, it's an area that's directly below the, by, behind the office, the port office, which is in the top right hand corner of that, that bottom slide. It's, a, it's an extension of Commercial Canal, 1,500 linear feet. We feel it's going to be completed in the next 12 months. That's going to open up another 82 uh, acres of, of land, waterfront property for development. And I know, I think, Craig, we have prospects already talking to you about the possibility of locating there. Next slide this is just a listing of all the major projects within the last few years. Two of, of, of note is the second one, which is a West Yard expansion purchase. That, that's when the port acquired the Unifab Yard. I know all you are familiar with the Unifab Yard. We currently have a, a world wide um, company, drilling company, Sea Drill, located on that site. That was a major expansion mm -hmm. in addition to the three I just spoke about. And the Mosing property acquisition was Frank Casing. Uh, we purchased that, uh, I guess, about a year ago. And uh, we currently have a company there, Global Riser, which I think Craig is going to address in a few minutes. And you can see the other projects, significant spending in the last few years on, on projects at the port. We had a major tenant expansion, short energy and chemical. Uh, one of our longtime uh, uh, tenants is in the, in the um, coal box business. They, they design and construct coal boxes, which is a process that um, liquefies gases, mostly uh, natural gas, and so they heavy into LNG. They invested, they doubled their footprint on the port. They are spending four and a half million dollars with their own money retrofitting three of our existing buildings to accommodate the construction of those, those coal boxes. It's a, that's another good win for the port and it's private dollars that's being pumped into uh, public assets. And the next are three tenants. I'll, I'll let uh, Craig talk about those. These are three tenants that we've signed within uh, probably within the last 12 to 15 months. Uh, we're improving their infrastructure. Um, we're spending a considerable amount of 
port priority, which is a state funded port program to uh, update the sites for these three projects. And Craig, if you want to pick it up from there. Sure. You have a clicker? You want me to? I can run through those slides real quick. I'm just going to give you all a quick if overview and some pictures of the businesses that have located. Before you begin, if you could just state your name and title for I'm record. sorry, Craig Romero, Executive Director of the Port of Iberia. I want to thank the Public Works Department, too, uh, for the last couple of weeks. Larry, you said the side boom out there, we cleaned up all the canal banks, and it makes it look much more attractive. We have a big company out of Baton Rouge, much like Turner, that wants to come, and we need to make it look good, and it's they've been doing hard. a really good job. So thank you very much thank again. You, thank you. All you need to do is fix the road now. We, we have <laughs> look, I've actually, I've actually been talking to the chairman about some stuff here, all so right, we're going to work. I'm glad, glad you said that, Mr. Uh, Director Romero. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> No, okay, I'm going to go through this real quick. This is the route from the Port of Iberia to the Gulf of Mexico. That red line is 57 miles. It goes down south from the Port of Iberia, hits the Intercoast Canal for 17 miles, and then takes off from Intercoast City, goes down Freshwater Bayou. This is one of the dredges operating. Crosby, at the Port of Iberia itself, the big boat right in the middle. The, on the left is a jack-up, but on the right, and you can see the dredge line. That dredge line goes to the McElhenney property uh, just north of Avery Island, south of the port. They gave us nine, we negotiated a deal, 900 acres, to create new marsh, thanks to the McElhenney company. We're getting rid of that dredge material, and it's called, what you call beneficial use, creating new land and the McElhenney's are really excited. This is the other dredge. You can see how big these things are. This is in the main canal, and on this end, on the left side, is the big um, crane, and then there's a cable, set of cables that go down, and the dredge head goes down, and it just swivels from left to right, and then they move it over, and it's got about a 26-inch header on it, the uh, boring machine that just grinds it up, shoots it in a tube with a lot of water, and goes into the marsh. This is one of the dredge disposal areas. This is in addition to the McElhenney property. We needed to start the project because whenever you get capital outlay money out of Baton Rouge, it's very time sensitive. If you don't spend it, they're going to steal it in the next session. I spent 16 years there, and I know how to do that, and I did a lot of it. <laughs> so, so we started dumping on port land, and the irony of it is now this big company out of Baton Rouge, this is land, some of the land they want. They want 60 acres. This is some of the land they want. Now we're meeting out there with companies that have done the LNG plants out south of Lake Charles in the marsh and in Plaquemine to stabilize this dredge material, which is almost impossible, but we're going to get it done. <coughs> side to side. Side to side. Yeah. Oh, side to side. Okay. This is the segment from Intracoastal City to the Gulf. This contract, the Port Commission just let this advertise and bid this. This segment right here is, um, I think, $21.4 million to dredge this, and it'll take till April of next year, like Roy said. Uh, pretty involved. We negotiated with the Vermilion Land Corporation and Exxon. We have a big two different disposal sites along Freshwater Bayou. Um, it's, it's pretty good deal. These are the new companies that have come. Sea drill, you heard us talk about it before. Turn Industries, E-Crane is out of Poland. They build these big, white, stiff leg cranes, of which you'll see uh, they're going to build their Western Hemisphere, a, a Western Hemisphere assembly yard here. They build the cranes in Poland, and they bring them here, and they're going to put them together. One of the, two of the cranes they're going to put together are of such size, the buckets, it's a clam bucket is what you call it. It has a capacity of 53 cubic yards. That's probably half the size of this room. Half of this room is how big. And when those machines are put together, we're going to have a big show and tell. We're going to invite everybody because it's going to be something worth telling the world for. But this company is out of Poland. They signed a 15-year initial term lease, and they want 15 more years. We're building a new bulkhead you'll see a picture of, and we're going to retrofit some of the old dynamic buildings to help them. It's probably spending 7 or $8 million to accommodate them, but they're going to be a real good tenant. Bayou Pipe Coating, you know, has been here 40 years. Uh, chart. Roy just gave a synopsis of what they've done. They doubled their footprint. They've added a couple of hundred people, 
And then the last company, Global Rises, is a company out of Cape Town, South Africa. They're here to co-locate to maintain drilling rises for Sea Drill and Valeris, which is located in Broussard and Diamond Offshore. All the drilling companies are here, and they want it to be close. We bought the land from Franks one day, and the next day it was leased to those people, and they've got like what amounts to a 30-year lease as well. So they're from South Africa, and I'm going to try to bring the manager to one of your next meetings to come and explain what they do. This is Sea Drills, an aerial view of Sea Drills building. This is the old dynamic facility. This entire 60-acre site is a foreign trade zone. They went to the federal government and applied and got the designation as a foreign trade zone. Um, this is really good. They have probably 30 drill ships all over the world. This is one of this is one off of the coast of Spain. And that warehouse that you just saw is a parts warehouse for comp rig components for the, all the rigs they have all over the world. They'll fix them here. All the machine shops are busy. They, they issued $1.2 billion worth of purchase orders out of this office in Iberia last year to fix parts and pieces for their drill ships. That's where the economics come in. They don't have a lot of jobs. In today's world, they probably have 25 employees of their own, but everything else goes to all the machine shops to get their stuff working. Turner, a lot of you came to the event last year. This is Turner's yard with all the modules that they fabricate and ship. They've shipped out everything that you're looking at. has all been shipped out about a week ago, and now they, they're waiting on the next job shipment of materials to start. This is their main warehouse. This is one of their modules. What everybody likes about the Port of Iberia, you have no height restrictions when you go down to Intracoastal like you do with other fabrication locations. Turner spoke of that. Uh, and then the new company, that's why they're coming. There's no height restrictions. In fact, here's another load out of some modules that went to Ohio. Look how tall. This is four stories, these modules. So they can go on location and build them as high as they want. And that's one of the good attributes of the Port of Iberia. Chart, we spoke of that. This is their original place that they've been for over 30 years, building heat exchanges and coal boxes. And the LNG industry, since the Ukrainian situation took off and Putin did what he did, they have a five to seven year backlog. That's what's stimulating their business. They're trying to accelerate all the plant expansions of all the LNG plants and all the new bills that you read about that the federal government's trying to shut down. This is the new chart yard that they've occupied. This is an old picture. Now it looks like the old yard. It's full of personnel. They've hired over 200 people. In fact, these are the heat exchanges that they build. All, and these devices are the main component of the LNG plants. When the gas is brought into the plant, it comes out in, a, as a, in the form of a coal liquid for exporting purposes. And that's what these people are so good at. This is a picture. This, on both sides where these cars are parked, a year ago, this was all di open ditches. Chart hard. So many people, we had to pipe all the ditches, come up with money, and start piping the ditches so we could accommodate the new employees. Bayou pipe now, these are concrete coating uh, pipes that Bayou is coating. This is all connecting the LNG plants, like in Plaquemine Parish, in Cameron Parish, in Lake Charles. Uh, when you get close to the plant in the marsh areas, the, the gas is so light when you establish the flow line, if you don't have it weighted, the gas is so light, the pipeline will come out of the ground. So you have to weight it. This is going to be a big part of Bayou Pipe's operations for the next three to five years, according to Bayou Pipe. This is enormous. This is Ecrane's yard, a rendering of what it's going to look like. Uh, next to, in the rooftop at the bottom that you see is Cedro's rooftop. This is the workboat show in New Orleans last year. I went there and helped them work the workboat show, and they presented at the workboat show. If you look in the middle, that's the rendering I just showed you. That was the centerpiece of their presentation. And the workboat show is a pretty big deal. Uh, this is the bulkhead we're building, around $4 million at Ecrane's yard. And the spot in the middle uh, with the cross members, that's a crane pad. They bought a 350-ton crane out of Canada that they're going to pick up these large parts and pieces to put <coughs> these cranes together. And uh, this is a, one of the infrastructure things Roy mentioned. This is the Frank yard that we bought, and now it's Global Risers. And this is an overview. Uh, of how expansive. It's over 90 acres and they occupied the whole thing. Give you an example. This is another shot of it. This is an example. These boat, this boat here is one of the Edison Schwest boats. It's a 285 foot boat. Historically, they strictly go to Port of Fouchon. They don't come to the Port of Iberia. It's too shallow. They're bringing risers now directly from the rig to the Port of Iberia to be offloaded to go to sea drill. The last rig move, they can't come with the boat fully loaded. They bring about half to three quarters of a load, depending on the capacity of the boat. 
but they'll come into the Port of Ariel. The last rig that came in, and they did it that way, because these risers, I'm going to show you, look how long they are. They're 90 to 110 foot long. You put one of those pieces on one stretch trailer, and then you have to have an escort with lights on. And from Fouchon to over here, for one rig, you may have 400 of these. 400 times the money. An escort is $500 from Fouchon to here. They saved over $300,000 just eliminating the escorts alone. So it added a lot of value, and sea drill is all excited. It's, this is another boat out of New Orleans, a 260-foot boat uh, with risers that came straight in from the rig, which is revolutionary for the Port of Iberia. That is awesome. That's it in a nutshell. I just want to give you all some pictures of what's going on. Thank you all very much. Good. Uh, we do have a question for uh, Director Romero, uh, Council Member from District 10. Uh, more of a comment and a question. Uh, the port is in my district, and uh, I had the opportunity to ride around with Craig uh, maybe last week around the port, and uh, I, I felt very important riding with Craig. Uh, <laughs> We've seen some stuff in we we seen some stuff in the port that I've never seen before, and it, it's it's truly amazing. Uh, Y'all doing a really really great job at the port, you know, from what it was to what it is now. Uh, Craig, I'm asking you one question: What's one thing you need from the parish? Well, it's a trick not question. often we look. We've been patching those potholes long. The other day when we rode, you said slow down, slow down. I said no, I want the full effect of you hitting the top of my cab. If you don't hit the top, you won't understand what I'm trying to tell you. And it's true. The roads so are horrible. So I invite y'all to please come because look, this company coming from Baton Rouge, and I hope I have an announcement the next month's meeting. They, they, you know, all the property they want is right in front where Turner is at. All. Go turn by turn the industries and go look at the road. It's converted. They're not putting asphalt anymore. They're putting limestone on a blacktop road. Mm -hmm. We're going back. We're making a limestone road out of an asphalt road. The holes are so bad. The base, the foundation under the road has broken. So, I mean, I've talked, and I think y'all got some ideas, but we really need to work with y'all to make that happen. Uh, well, we please. So look, I got a great commission. So All that we're doing, they, they say go get it, and we go get it. Uh, and we go to Baton Rouge as often as we have, and... Uh, CPRA, I'm excited about that because I think we're going to be able to do some things with the people we have <laughs> in places. The legislative delegation helped us with all that funding. And to give you all $124 million, we spent $75 million of the $124 million just to lower the pipelines before we started dredging. That's how expensive it is. So 24-inch pipelines, you got to dig a hole 70 feet under the canal and shove that pipe under the canal and come <laughs> up. In fact, the first one they did at the port for Shell they went and surveyed or put a stake in the cane field in Ricky Gonsalans Field, and he said, that's where the pipe, that's where the, the pipes, the bore is going to come out. <coughs> and this was on the other side of the canal where the drill bit was going to be. That stuff, yeah. stuff is so, you know, it's so advanced. Yeah. And sure enough, I was there when that thing came up, that stake was shaking. That big 24-inch mm -hmm. drill bit was coming out the ground, churning dirt, and it came out right there. But it's, uh, good. you know, we're doing good things, but we got good support in Baton Rouge. We've had tremendous support. Fred, I can name them all, because they all went to bat. Fred Mills and having Paige Cortez from Lafayette, President of the Senate, they tried to pull some money a couple of times. Paige sat on them. He made sure they funded it. Bob Henskins, uh, Blake Migas, all of them. I mean, but Stuart Bishop was in ch Chairman of Ways and Means. He put in the first $38 million for the channel four years ago. And then $58 million was the second appropriation. If you come to my office, you can see a big check, almost as big as that screen, for $58 million. And everybody laughs and say, what you did that for? I guess we never got a check that big. <laughs> but, you know, we had a lot of help. It's a team effort. So thank you all very much for everything you all so Mr. Cleaning Chair, the ditches, it all adds up. What I was, what I was getting at is, uh, you know, we got that TIF district for a reason. I think we need to start maybe looking into helping out the port area a little bit. Good. The gentleman from District 10 yields back. Anyone else, members? Here in Encina. Uh, Director Romero, it's always a pleasure when you come. I know there's good news coming majority of the time, and you always got an ally here at the, the courthouse. We appreciate Thank all you do. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything. Uh, moving on to Public Works Report. Uh, number one, Madam Clerk. Public Works Department report for closed work orders dated July 24, 2024 through August 13, 2024. Special business, there is none. Consent agenda items for public hearing and adoption. We have the minutes, a regular meeting of August 14, 2024. Summary number 146 introduced by the Register of Voters. 
A resolution of appreciation and congratulations to Ms. Phyllis Dermar Nelson of the Iberia Parish Clerk of Court's Office upon her retirement from the parish with 42 years of service. Summary number 147 introduced by the Clerk of the Council. A resolution authorizing the following of an application with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development for a grant under any of the following FTA programs managed through Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development small operating. Do I have a motion to open consent agenda items? I have a motion by Councilman Brown, second by Councilman Broussard. Councilman Brown on discussion. Oh, Councilman Broussard. I was going to pull <coughs> to recognize Ms. 146, is she here? For what purpose does the gentleman seek recognition? <coughs> to recognize her. Any objection to that, members here and seeing none? Uh, Councilman Broussard yields back. Councilman Rossney? Wait. Councilman Rawson A. Waves. Uh, is there any discussion, members? Hearing and seeing none, we'll go ahead and have final adoption on consent agenda items, including only summary number 147. Without objection, members, vote your machines as publicized. That motion carries unanimously. Mm. Back to summary number 146. Do I have a motion to open? Motion by Councilman Pellerin, second by Councilman Trahan. Councilman Pellerin, on discussion. Yeah, I'd like to recognize <clears throat> Ms. Phyllis. Is Ms. Phyllis here tonight? Yes, I am. Ms. Phyllis, if you want to come to the podium and state your name, please. Okay. And you used to be title. What your title was? And what you used to be title. Okay, um, I'm Phyllis Nelson. I was the uh, supervisor of the civil department at the Iberia Parish Clerk of Court's office. Okay, I thank Chrissy for um, presenting this. I was surprised, but that's all good. I'd like to thank Larry Richard, Warren Gotchasan, who is my councilman, and all the ladies and gentlemen of the council. Thanks for acknowledging my retirement. I stand before you today with a heart full of gratitude as I reflect on my 42 years of service at the Iberia Parish Clerk of Court. I started August 9, 1982 at 16 years old, hired by Mr. Oris Leblanc as a COE student at NISH. It is both an honor and a privilege to have dedicated so many years to a position <coughs> that has allowed me to serve this wonderful community. I have worked under four different Clerk of Courts, finishing my career under David Ditch, Thank you for being here, who is our clerk of court now. Throughout these four decades, I have had the pleasure of working with so many co-workers, attorneys, and judges that played an instrumental, important role in my journey. As I take a step into retirement, I'm excited for the new adventures that lie ahead. I hope to travel more and enjoy my quality with my family, and my, especially my grandbaby. Thank you once again for this recognition Iberia Parish will always be my home, and I look forward to staying connected with all of you. Thank you so much. Ms. Phyllis, I want to say this. Uh, I know everybody's clapping, but I think 42 years, I want to stand up for you. <laughs> 42 years. Of Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, this public service is, is very tough, but uh, Mr. Pellerin, you still had the floor. Um, if you could just stay in there, there's a couple more comments to come. I just 42 years, Ms. Phyllis, I mean, that's that's a long time to work for parish government. We just recommend, I mean, thank you for all the service yeah. you did. I love my job and I love what I did. I'm still hanging on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love the people though. That's the gentleman the from <coughs> District 10 yields back. The gentleman from District 8 is recognized. I just want to thank you for all your years of service to the parish and uh, I hope your retirement serves you well and you enjoy the rest of it. Thank you so much. The gentleman from District 8 yields back. The gentlelwoman from District 6 is recognized. Uh, Phyllis, I mean, I've been practicing law here for 30 of those 42 years, and uh, you have been very instrumental uh, in the clerk of court's office through those 42 years. Uh, I've seen it firsthand, and I know that you will be missed, and you, you're leaving some big shoes to fill. So thank you for everything you've done, and best luck from here on out. And enjoy retirement. You've earned it. You deserve it. Thank you, Dally. Uh, uh, the gentlewoman from District 6 yields back. I, I do want to say this. Ms. Uh, Bruce Hart's been for about 30 years. I've been on earth for a few more years than that. <laughs> I'm not saying that you old, but you've, you've done a great job in public service. I know in, w most people don't often recognize, but public service is a very tough profession but you do it out of the kindness of your heart. You don't do it for the money. And so I, I just want <laughs> to right. say again to you, thank you for your service <laughs> to this community. Okay, I, I think you. we do have somebody, parish president. Yes, Phyllis, I want to thank you so much. After six months of being employed, you got my marriage license. I, I sure did. <laughs> I, I, I typed his marriage license <laughs> for him. Poor Kim. Poor <laughs> Miss Kim. 41 and a half years. I was years. very new. <laughs> 41 and a half years ago. Phyllis, you, you're an amazing person. Absolutely. And I um, thank the world of you. Congratulations on your work career. Enjoy your retirement, and um, 
I don't know what we're gonna say about that, that man over there, but. Oh my husband. <laughs> I don't know what we can say about that man over he has there. To, he has to keep working, I'm he sorry. Keep working. <laughs> That's okay. Look, my wife retired and I'm still working, okay? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, members, before we take final adoption on this, uh, did anyone want to request a vote for a uh, unanimous second? I have a motion on the floor for unanimous second by the gentlewoman from District 6. Is there any objection to that? Hearing and seeing none, members, vote your machines on final adoption. Summary number 146 has publicized with a unanimous second. That motion carries unanimously. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you all. Members, moving on to ordinances introduced for public hearing and adoption. We have none for tonight. Resolutions introduced for public hearing and adoption. We have summary number 148 introduced by Scott Ross in the District 9. In resolution amending the 2024 general fund budget in the amount of $20,000 to include election expense, expenses for an early voting location in Louisville and Delcom, Louisiana for future elections all to be funded from fund balance previous years. Do I have a motion on the floor? I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Rossney. Do I have a second? Second on the floor by Councilman Capel. Councilman Rossney on discussion. Uh, I guess I'll start first. Just real quick. We talked about it a lot in the committee. We're not opening a precinct. Okay, let's keep that in mind. All we're doing is expanding the early voting ability. Uh, we're expanding the ease of early voting. We're putting it closer to the residents. So yes, there will be some funding, but it's to help the public who is paying for this to begin with. It's their tax dollars. So we're, we're cutting, uh, I think it's seven miles off of a trip from the furthest point of District 9 to this courthouse. Seven miles per person, okay? That money can go back into the economy a different way or not. And Delcom, I'm not sure how far you, you're cutting, but it's probably close, if not the same. So, uh, I, I'm going to be short and sweet. We, like I said, we beat it up in committee. But uh, Mr. Craig mentioned something earlier about Ukraine. 30-something million people have left that country, and they can't vote. So this, this is the greatest country on earth, whether you like it or not. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'll say it. You know, and it's because of voting, because we all get the chance to walk into that booth. So to make it easier is the right thing to do. Uh, I could go on some other countries, but there, there's some other ones that <laughs> we all know. Good. It's all the wars, right? These people don't even get to vote, so right. Right. make it easy on our citizens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from District 9 yields back. The gentleman from District 13 is recognized. Councilman Rawson, they pretty much summed it up, but it's to make pretty much an equal opportunity for everyone to get out an early vote. Thank you. The gentleman from District 13 yields back. Uh, anyone else, members, on main motion discussion? No. I do want to say, uh, again, I agree with you. We did have an extensive debate in committee. I do feel this is appropriate. Again, we, we talk about often, you know, especially at the coffee shops, how bad the voter turnout is. This is another opportunity or another uh, tool in the basket to give them, the people of this parish, an opportunity to vote. You never know what arises. LSU games come along. A lot of things happen. This gives them an opportunity to uh, not have an excuse but to go vote. So. Hearing and seeing no other debate members, vote your machines on the final adoption summary number 148 as publicized. That motion carries. Councilman Swear and Councilman Pellerin in opposition. Moving on to summary number 149, introduced by Fire Protection District number one. A resolution de declaring various vehicles as surplus property and further authorizing disposal of same in accordance with parish policy and state law as requested by the Iberia Parish Fire Prote Protection District 1. Do have a motion. Have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Broussard, second by Councilman Landry. Councilwoman Broussard on discussion. Waived. Councilman Landry. Waived. Any main motion discussion members? Hearing and seeing none, vote your machines. Final adoption summary number 149 as publicized. Councilman Montre. That motion carries unanimously. Now moving on to summary number 150 introduced by the Parish President. A resolution amending the 2024 general fund budget in the amount of 22895 to reduce appropriated postage expenditures incurred during the redistricting process as provided by the Secretary of State that the state legislature took action to cover this expenditure. Do we have a motion? Have a motion on the floor by Councilman Brown, second by Councilwoman Broussard. Councilman Brown on discussion. Always. Councilwoman Broussard. Any main motion discussion members here in the CNN, vote your machines. Final adoption, summary number 150 as publicized. Councilmember Landry. 
That motion carries unanimously. Now moving on to summary number 151, introduced by Regional Planning Commission. A resolution granting preliminary and final plat approval to a subdivision of property belonging to J. Bro Enterprises located on Koto Road District 14 to subdivide 46.612 acres of property into 191 lots for residential use subject to compliance with planning commission staff report pc 2024-0012 all as reviewed and recommended by the iberia parish regional planning commission do i have a motion on the floor members have a motion on the floor by councilman landry do i have a second second by councilman broussard councilman landry in discussion councilman broussard bit more legible for us to read it's very small and it's hard I think it's the second or third time it's when we get these things it's it's uh, you know it's it's unlegible and uh, I'm not fussing I'm just asking if we just kind of spread get a little bit wider. I don't know there's planning and zoning this institute is, mr. Marcus we're gonna, uh, I just want to help out uh, by yeah. saying we were having an implementation with a program right now when that thing is done in about a month Y'all are gonna have full access to all this stuff when it comes to these to well, these packets. Well, you know, I got my and reader glasses on. Still I know. Uh, we got it though. It's coming on a digital. It goes from one five. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, I, that's all. We're working on it. Yes, sir. Uh, this is nice. Gentleman from District Three yields back. The gentleman from District Ten is recognized. Oh, I'm, I'll wave to Jacob. If you could state your name and yep. title, please. Thank you, Parish uh, Council. Um, Jacob Weaver permits planning and zoning. So. Uh, new development on Highway 88, uh, same developer uh, that took over uh, the Koto Ridge development. Um, so this would be a public road, um, 191 lots, minimum lot size. It's you, uh, let's say it's uniform, 6,000 square foot, uh, because it's on public sewer. Um, they're not asking for any waivers on any of the conditions, you know, which is typical. Um, one of the discussions was traffic studies and drainage impact studies this is on highway 88 which is a state highway they have to go through the state offices for those applications so you know it was you know let's say it was a discussion at planning commission you know who's requiring a requirement they're always required but in this instance because it's on a state highway it actually is applied through the state office for permitting they're going to be the ones who's going to review their drainage impact analysis they're going to be the ones who's going to review their traffic analysis so uh, we had a little bit of discussion on that in the past week, so I just wanted to clarify that if anybody had a question on it. Uh, Brock, you don't have you, you good? You'll back the floor. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Uh, I do have a question, uh, Mr. Weaver. Uh, I'm looking at the owner's name. Is is that who still currently owns the property, or that was Gordon's? That yes, Gordon's disposal still owns it. Okay. Um, I do have a question by Councilman Pollard. Yes. What, what part of 80 this? That is as close as you can get to 182. Okay. So if you stay on Admiral Dole, you run into the property. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the gentleman yields back. Uh, Mr. Weaver, or at least let, let me just make a comment before we, I get to Mr. Tron. It's uh, never in my wildest dreams, probably nine years ago when we first started, eight and a half years ago, did I ever think we would be on our second major neighborhood development. And not only is a second development, but one of them's already into a second phase, and we're starting with a potential of another phase to come. But how how big is this? This big. is, I mean, yeah, this is economic big, big for us. You know, I mean, we, we we have this high demand of jobs. Proximity for these guys to work and live near these jobs is obvious. You know, so and, and honestly, affordability you cross that line into the next parish it is just that much more to buy a house you could buy this house across that parish line there's just differences you know so we really are happy that they're able to build this here but yeah they still have to build it you know so it, you know we we, we want to make sure that we do this right and, and do it you know uh, according to the rule book but no we really do need this um, to say the least you know so members i, I want to just say this before i turn over the mic to uh, councilman Trahon. you're going to see coming up in your budget jacob's department mr weaver's department has brought in over 1.5 million dollars in in revenue in that so department far. 
so far this year. So far. We budget, I think, 1.6 million. Right. And that goes to show you the development you're seeing across the parish. I mean, and quality development, quality jobs coming, quality rooftops, not two tracks, three tracks, actual neighborhoods. Right. Chad, I hate to say it, the biggest problem Koto is going to have is going to have to redistribute you before 10 years. You're going to have, <laughs> you have so much population there. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman from District 8 is recognized. Yeah, uh, Jacob, I just want to say. So we're looking at 191 rooftops basically here. We uh, we got other phases with the Koto Ridge coming up, and I'm sure there'll be other phases to this project or around this project. So I, I just want to let the people know that I keep hearing about we have no place for somebody to live when they come work over here. They're going to live in uh, Lafayette, Rousseau, or Youngsville. This is proof we will have a place for people to live. So we welcome them to come on down. They can move in our parish, go to work in our parish, and they won't just be Lafayette, Rousseau. Absolutely. And this is a two phase project. So they're going to, you know, do 100 lots, get to the next phase, you know, just kind of how they have to work these road developments yeah. to afford them somewhat, you know. But um, no, we're very excited. And, you know, this is, these are big plats. We're doing a ton of little plats out there, too. I mean, people are going, I'm, I'm going to square up an acre and yeah, put a house on it. So it is a busy time right yeah. now. Good, the good, gentleman good. from District 8 yields back. The gentleman from District 14 is recognized. Hey, Jacob, is there any concerns on the Almodal um, Koto Road intersection? You know, they, they blow, get blow through that intersection often and end up in that field. Is there any concerns for some type of buffer <coughs> with those houses right there? So that would be the back of the house. You know, these houses are going to be facing in, you know, but again, you got to jump a ditch, hit a fence, you know, don't want to scare yeah, the anybody. Back of the house would be the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get it. Um, <laughs> Uh, that <laughs> be careful with lot number 133 yeah. 144 34 huh? no the thing, i'm serious dude. no absolutely the thing there, the fence has been patched many times cause people i think it would be it. a good idea for us to get with the state and see what kind of ideas they have on that kind of situation you know but when a traffic study comes out they're trying to study. see right, flow of traffic how much traffic how fast they're going right. and, and it's to help these guys get out of their neighborhood and back into their neighborhood but no the this is a funny intersection but whenever i kind of whenever i bought me and mr larry brought this one up and and these developers have to apply for these drainage studies and there's nobody more capable to run those drainage studies uh, traffic studies than traffic dotd studies. they don't like applying to traffic studies to, G to dotd they like to do it to us we might let you know just it is what it is but we we definitely going to have these plans before us these construction documents before us so we public works you know us larry we will be looking at this before we crack dirt on anything so we will you know once they get their traffic <coughs> study approved by dotd we're going to see those plans for for construction so you know we we will see what they got for us but yeah we it's definitely a a, a sense of concern no doubt councilman Montre, you finished buddy? Yep. the gentleman from district 14 yields back the gentleman from district 3 is recognized yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. When, uh, how much time we have before this thing gets up and rolling? This? Yeah, uh, um, they're going to break ground next week. Next tentatively, month, next this a lot could be sold for construction December next year. December next year, okay. So, so they 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 could have a final plat for a part of this possibly by the end of next year to build on. Yeah, this is right on me and Chad's. So uh, I think it's on your side of the road, but this is right in that whole network of roads that that. I keep, you, know, you, you made a comment about 182, the railroad crossing. So, yeah, I'm glad you talk, brought up the, the study because um, this is going to be. The already. state has got us under a microscope, and we just hope they, they want, they, we, they're, aware, they're reading. We all know it. They just the asked us for a study on corporate, and we had to give them everything that we had tentatively coming because they, they see this <clears> coming, and they're, you know, obviously trying to see if they need to expand anywhere, put lights anywhere. You know, now they're talking about maybe even a, a, a roundabout at the end of Admiral Dole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, right. Admiral Dole and to, to, to help with that. One continuous run. So there's a number of things we can do. I hope they're talking about it. Because, again, it's uh, not us to design it, right and now. but they're gonna. Yep. Hopefully, they don't short yeah, us. Yeah, you know, the gentleman from District Three yields back. Uh, I, I do want to say this again. I'm gonna go to you, Councilman Pellerin. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we had talked about uh, the state legislature had a deal on uh, solar forms. And I think during that eight hour segment, I got to at least seven hours. I think Iberia Parish was mentioned three times of the monstrosity of development that's coming in the parish. I mean, we look back five, six years ago, 
we have never been mentioned in the committee uh, committee meeting. New Iberia, Iberia Parish, oh, yeah. and now you we're starting to be we're being put on a place or on a map of what's being said out there because <laughs> of good development. And, and again, the whole point of what I'm trying to make is it can't happen without cooperation between both branches of government, from right. the legislative to the the executive branch. So, Mr. Richard, kudos to your team. Thank you, Jacob. I know a lot of what you're going through. We we got a couple of hiccups here, but look at what where you were last year compared to here and where we're going forward. It's it's it's, yeah. it's amazing, man. It's nice to have. It's crazy, nice to be man. capable again. Yeah, it's like a dream. I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Peller. Yeah, uh, Jacob. When this went to uh, planning and zoning, did they see anything? It was all good. No, sir. No, sir. And uh, we didn't have any, you know, public. Nobody showed up for the meeting. Nobody called. There's not many neighbors actually right here. Yeah. So, uh, no, it went through pretty well. Uh, I do believe the parish president. Yeah. <clears throat> if I can, the um, corporate drive, when we did the traffic study at corporate drive, <clears throat> went all the way down to Highway 80, 182. Just for your information, you're going to have traffic lights at 182 now. Hmm. In fact, I spoke to the um, administrator of DOTD earlier this week, so they're already doing the work. You should have that there in the next several months before the beginning of the year, yeah, by December. When, you, when you're talking about the um, Highway 88, I also spoke to Eric about that on Monday, the traffic study that we're going to do there. In fact, I talked to Jacob, I think, on Monday and had Jacob to contact the developer for them to get with Eric prior to do prior to actually doing the study uh, because you don't want them spending on necessary dollars but um, this is a big deal for Iberia Parish mr. chairman if you take the 191 lots that's going to be sold and you just average it out at a two hundred fifty thousand dollars per home you're talking almost 48 million dollars that's a lot of money in Iberia Parish that you're going to get taxes on that you're going to get tax on every year so this is a big deal for us. If I'm not mistaken, how many lots we have available in Iberia Parish now? Roughly around a thousand, was it 900 Yeah, we, we tried to count them up the other day. Yeah, I think it's 900, <laughs> right at a thousand lots available now. So when you hear people saying that there's nowhere, we have a lot of places in Iberia Parish where people can build if they want to build. And we're trying to get it to where they can build affordable homes as well. I guess I do have a question too. When we start to talk about utilities, let, for instance, uh, solid waste, at some point, or a neighborhood develops like this, do they amend the house count, or do how, how does that happen? Well, to get the, the solid waste, they might have to. Do, well, we got that with Brad, of course. Everything that we're doing with sol solid waste, you have some. No, I'm, I'm talking about solid waste pickup. Oh no, Bulky yeah, waste. yeah, I you mean, just it, have to amend that. Oh no, 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 no. Oh. I thought you was talking about the real deal. No, My mind I mean, is on no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, no. he's a count no, for that. That's, obviously, that's not a big deal. That's oh, we'll anyway. just they will oh, just amend the count. You got 191. Count. They had 191. Yeah, I'd like to see, I, I, you know, our contract comes up in a couple of years. I'd yeah. like to see what that, that house count was then compared to in a couple of years from now, what oh, it's yeah. going to be like. And, I mean, and if, I, if I can, going back to what I was talking about, solid waste, Mr. Chairman, just for the council members, it's almost that time of year where I do the uh, annual capital outlay request. And I just want you to know right now that I will be putting a request in for $50 million for a sewer plant to be developed in built in Iberia Parish, a sewer treatment plant to be Good. built in Iberia Parish. We have a lot of growth going on. There is absolutely no way <clears throat> that we're going to be able to continue to do what we do in trying to get these lines run from no. all over the parish going to Center Street. It's simply not going to happen. So I wrote a letter, I guess about three weeks ago, to the governor, copied all of our state delegation as well as our congressional <clears throat> delegation because I'm going to need about 50 or 60 million dollars to do this. In fact, I'm going to be talking to you, Mr. Chairman, you first um, as well, uh, finance chair, because I want to try to do some stuff with some lobbyists to right. get some money in Washington, D.C. So we're going to be shooting for 60 million dollars. I already spoke to Senator Cassidy and others, and we need to get this thing rolling because it's going to take years to make that come to reality. So, thank you. We have another question about Councilman Peller. And, and that'll be it for me, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. You promise? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just studying this. Uh, Jacob, I just don't want to run into the same problem we had with uh, Koto Ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, asphalt, curb, and gutter. He is aware that he has, has to go with concrete pipe and not plastic pipe on his curb and gutter system, right? And I want to specify this because DOTD standards there was 
a black pipe and a white pipe are two different things. They do make a high density white pipe that is approved. That's plastic. I don't know what I, I don't know what they're submitting yet. So it may be submitted as concrete, but they may submit that high density, 2000 or whatever it is that they are approving now. I mean, they do it in Lafayette, they do it everywhere. So just want to say we, but it would be right. We would, this stuff is, we're not going to, the problem was, is that was a change order and it was never approved. And th that's what happened with that. And it had to all come back here to get approved again. I just, I just want to make sure we don't run into the same I hope problem on, with I this hope one. On, moving turns forward into, you yeah. know what i think we've seen enough problems with what happens when you don't between us and public works mm -hmm. just watching and inspecting and you know going through the normal maintenance walkthroughs on these neighborhoods before we accept them you know so the gentleman from we're district gonna have 10 a, we're gonna have back. a tight hold on it hopefully the gentleman from district 14 is recognized uh, so jacob sewer is going to be private uh we're going to be shooting to connect this to sewer, uh, to commute to city sewer. Yeah. Okay. I think it's uh, 1,200 yeah. feet away. Yeah, it's, not, it's already there. Okay. Yeah, it's not that far. More difficult. Now, I'm, I will tell you, some things will change in that area. You know, we've had not far down the road, LCBDG grants have been so now they, when they started calculating these house values, that could change the areas how we qualify for certain grants. Yeah. So as yeah. good as some things are, we lose some things that we kind of rely on and those lcbd grants are not just for expansion but for major uh, right. improvements to the already infrastructure we have in that area so sure. mr macho will you finish yeah yeah nice, nice. here and no other uh, request to speak members i'll ask for a mo uh, to vote your machines on final adoption summary one 151 as recognized <clears throat> that motion carries unanimously now moving on to summary number 152 introduced by the clerk a resolution authorizing a permanent change in the mm. polling place location for District 2, Precinct 2 from Sugarland Elementary School to the Westgate High School located at 2305 mm. Jefferson Island Road, New Iberia, Louisiana, effective immediately. Do have a motion? I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Landry, second by Councilman Russo. Are Councilman Landry in discussion? Yeah, I, I got with David and uh, Christy on this one. We forgot they were shutting down Sugarland for about a year. Or, or better uh, so the recommendation was to make it at sh at, a, at the high school at Westgate permanently and it's just 50 feet old <laughs> maybe so now I concur I hope y'all uh, back me. <laughs> the gentleman from district 2 yields back the gentleman from district 3 is recognized I wave sir any other main motion discussion members hearing and seeing none vote your machines Final adoption summary number 152 as publicized. That motion carries unanimously. Moving on to ordinances introduced for publication purposes. Summary number 5309 introduced by Warren P. Goshen, District 5. For what, for what purpose does a general woman seek recognition? Move to waive the reading. I have a motion on the floor to waive the reading of the official journal. Is that okay with the second by Councilman Rossine? Is there any objection to that, members? Hearing and seeing none, vote your machines to waive uh, the reading of the official journal. That motion carries. Uh, moving on to announcements. Just to remind the general public, our next council meeting will be September 11, 2024 at 6 p.m. And a reminder to visit Iberia Parish government website for uh, to take our stormwater management survey and view the list of adjudicated properties. I need a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Councilman Broussard, second by Councilman Fowler. Vote your machines on adjournment, members. That motion carries unanimously. We now adjourn. Don't want to roll for the roll. Committee uh, meeting to order. The current time now is 7:23. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Francis Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Marcus Broussard. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gotchison. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Dustin Swear. Here. James Traha. Here. Scott Ronson, yes. Brock Pellerin, yes. Brian Napier, Lady Fontenette Brown, Cayman Capel, yes. and Chad Montreman. Yes. Okay, we have 11 members in the quorum. Uh, Mr. Broussard will be absent at voting. Uh, I need a motion to go into public session. I have that motion by Councilwoman Broussard, second by Councilman Landry. Vote your machines for public session, members. Yes. Yeah.
Uh, that motion carries. Uh, let the record reflect that Council Member Bruce Orr was absent at voting. Uh, number one, gen uh, comments from the general public on agenda items. We did not receive any. Item A, Madam Clerk. Comments, oh, Mr. Bob, Mr. Bob Laracino to address the committee regarding amendment to the personal services agreement uh, for the record, record video services, LLC, doing business as Bob Laracino Productions. Uh, so let me, let me just say this. We always, or we never see the camera guy behind the camera, but finally we get to see the camera guy at the mic. Uh, video Bob, AKA. Bob Laracini. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Bob Laracini, uh, Bob Laracini Productions. Um, I don't have a big report. Um, I just want to say certainly we are streaming right now. We streamed the meeting starting at six o'clock and then we're continuing to stream. Um, I understand the legislature has passed a law that says municip municipalities of a certain size uh, need to live stream their meetings. And apparently Iberia Parish is of that size. So the clerk asked me to put together um, some numbers to and, and amend the con help her amend the contract so that we could provide this service. I'm not exactly sure where we are in the approval process or where legal is at, at looking at, at the contract, but this has all happened very fast. Um, as far as the me being informed about uh, uh, streaming, providing the streaming service, uh, I'll tell you as an aside, um, I have been looking for a number of months now at I guess upgrading the technology that we provide in recording the meetings. Um, the internet has gotten so fast and technology has evolved to the point where I can envision one day where we don't need to send a camera person here to record the meeting. The camera equipment could be here and from our offices in Lafayette, we can look in, start the recording, start the streaming, uh, and adjust the cameras to the proper framing and that sort of thing. Um, we're not there yet. I'm, I'm investigating the technology and learning a lot about it. I am using a, a device that would be a part of that type of uh, technical configuration, but in no way am I offering that service at this point. At this point, we're just looking at streaming your meetings, which can involve just nothing but uh, a laptop, and we're streaming into the uh, parish's YouTube channel. Uh, and I think without any publicity at all of the streaming service, I think I saw that you had 10 viewers at, at one point during the meeting. So um, there, were, there you go. That's something uh, <laughs> without any advertising whatsoever. Ten so zero. Um, there you go. So, um, I, you know, I certainly want to avail myself to any questions you might have about what we do. Uh, and that's that. <laughs> no, I, I just want to thank you because, you know, again, these unfunded mandates that come from the state. Yeah. This was thrown on us. When when did we receive that information? Back on September, uh, uh, August eighth yeah. or ninth, and you were able to get us up live streaming because this this act passed was uh, to be installed by August first. Yeah. So, but because of your cooperation with us and helping us, I mean, Bob, I mean, it it, it yeah. took a lot, but we we got to this point, and, and I appreciate right. you working with the clerk on right. that on that situation. My pleasure. Um, and um, we no no questions for video, Bob. Hearing and seeing none. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to number two, uh, comments from the general public on non-agenda items. We did not receive any uh, item A, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lole Duhon to address the committee regarding nuisance and drainage issues in his neighborhood. Is Mr. Duhon here? Yeah. He must have got it solved. All right, I need a motion to go back into regular session. I have that motion by Councilman Bruce, uh, Councilwoman Broussard, second by Councilman, let me call it, you see all those? Councilman Landry. Uh, vote your machines, members, to go back into regular session. That motion carries unanimously. We're now back into regular session. I need a motion to accept the minutes, regular joint committee meeting of August 14th, 2024. I got a motion by Mr. Gashasan, a second by Mr. Broussard. Mr. Gashasan? Wait. Mr. Broussard? Wait. All right, please vote your machines. Okay. Acceptance of meetings is unanimous. Thank you. I now open the Finance Committee meeting to order. The date is August 28, 2024, 7.30 p.m. Number one, discuss and consider amendment 
the financial services agreement uh, for the record video service LLC D slash B slash A Bob Laracini Productions in accordance with Act number 539 House Bill number 103 Warren Gosherson Jr. District 5. I have a motion by Mr. Gosherson and a second by Mr. Landry. Wait, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gosherson waves. Open. Mr. Landry. Any further discussion? No. Without discussion, please vote your machines. <clears throat> that motion passes unanimously. Number two, discuss and consider a resolution to amend 2024 general fund budget in the amount of $27,020 to appropriate partial year funding for additional employee and emergency management office to shadow director due to the un upcoming retirement of said position effective beginning on October 2024, all to be funded from fund balance previous year, parish president. Motion by Mr. Gosh-San, second by Mr. Landry. Mr. Gosh -San. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd, I'd ask for consideration from the council. This is just a mm -hmm. when the, the administration makes the decision on who they're going to bring in. This is going to be, you know, obviously that press's job is going to split right. roles. And then this is going to fund the emergency management side of it right. for somebody to actually transition into the period. And then once exactly. press goes, they'll be able to assume the, the full role, correct? Yes, sir. All right. I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Landry. I wave. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Cool. That motion passes unanimously. Motion to adjourn finance. Motion by Mr. Bruce, I second by Mr. Land. Any further discussion? Please vote your machines. Public board. Mrs. Natalie. Ms. Broussard. Meeting adjourned. And I'll call the Public Works Committee to order. The date is August 28th, 2024. The time is 7.33. Item number one, discuss and consider resolution amending resolution number 2011-61, adopted March 9th, 2011, which approved the list of parish drainage channels to be sprayed. Ditches and channels as listed in order to add a drainage ditch located near Church Street and Sparrow Street to the spray list, located in District 8, James P. Tronho, District 8. I got a motion and a second. Councilman Gotcha, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess I have a question for you. Uh, did you ride and take a look at this ditch? No. I did. Would you, what would you recommend a ditch be sprayed or cut? And what, what would be the guidelines for that, Mr. Chairman? Mm. Cut it with any road on the ditch. <laughs> um, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I know this is your first meeting. We, we like to tend to ask the goofiest yeah. questions for the first meeting. Yeah. Uh, would you help support Mr. Tron on this request? No pressure, Mr. Chairman. I mean, I want you to. If he thinks it's a good thing, I'm definitely with him. That's a good answer, Mr. Chairman. I'll support you on that. Congratulations. I knew that was coming. Councilman Trump? Yeah, it's, it's a ditch that's uh, between church going to a sparrow that's tight. Every year I get a call, uh, spray it. A gentleman called me about spraying it. So they go and spray it for him. So I just like to get it where the spray people can just keep it up. Well, you don't have to call. I don't have to call them, and they could work order for it. So, just trying to get on a spray list where we can just keep it sprayed for them. All right. <coughs> Councilman Peller. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how often? Uh, do you know how often we spray these ditches? That's going to cheer. What was that? I like that again. Uh, do you know how often we spray these ditches? Every. <laughs> <laughs> Once a month. Think for yourself. Three times a year. <laughs> Three times a year. <laughs> All right, thanks. Are you back? All right. <laughs> Councilman Trojo. Mr. Oh, Chairman, you can just tell anybody else has any questions to come to the author if they want to. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman, I'm going to 
Any other uh, comments? Nope. Seeing none, we'll uh, vote our machines. What you voting on? All right. <laughs> motion carries. I got a motion and a second to adjourn by Councilman Peller and Councilman Broussard. Vote your machines. Why? The public works. Good job. Good job.